Come on, is anybody happy to be in the house tonight? I, uh, first of all, I want to say thank you for the, that moment where you guys prayed for me. Um, I was in Dallas, Texas yesterday. Shout out to Dallas. Anybody from Dallas? Okay. Shout out to Dallas. And uh, I was in Dallas, Texas yesterday, and I was talking to some friends. And they were asking me, what is the best part about SEU, man? Is it, is it the chapels? Is it having SEU worship? Like, what's the best part about SEU? And without even blinking, I said, the best part about SEU is the people. It's the people. It's the community that we have. And um, I want you to know that it's an honor to serve. Um, but at the same time, I have fallen in love with this community. Some of you I've gotten to talk to more than others, but whenever I see you in Portico or walking down El Prado or I see you in the DSF office or by the mail room, just want you to know that every time I see any of you, it just fills my heart with joy. And I am honored to be a part of this community and I love you guys so much. And so just know that. Uh, welcome to the house, y'all. Here at the house, we are a family that loves so if you're here as a guest on a Monday night, maybe from a local college, maybe from the Lakeland area, maybe you drove from Orlando. I don't know where you're from, but I just want to encourage you that we are glad that you're here. Can we go to for all of our first time guests that are in the building tonight, y'all? Tonight we are continuing with a series that my friend Grant Skeldon. Can we get up for Grant Skeldon, everybody, for that word last week? Killed it. And uh, last week, my friend Grant started a brand new series called Knock Knock. Who's there? Knock Knock. Who's there? Knock Knock. Who's there? Um, whoever can send me the best Knock Knock joke in my DMs tonight, I will give you twenty dollars next week. Um, knock Knock. Who's there? That's the name of our series, and it's a series about identity, uh, because right now. In our world, the question that people are asking is not what should I do, but who should I be? And uh, in this time, it's important to know who you are, because if you don't know who you are, you won't know what to do. And if you don't know what to do, you won't know where to go. So if you got a Bible, I want you to open up to the book of Matthew, chapter 16. Matthew 16, 13. Jesus is having a conversation with one of his disciples where his disciple has an identity change. Somebody say identity. Has an identity change. He has a moment where his life is forever changed. Matthew chapter 16, verse 13. If you don't have a Bible, we're going to go ahead and put it up on the screen for you. Matthew 16, 13. It says, when Jesus, someone say Jesus, Jesus. came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the son of man is? You ever ask somebody, what do people say about me? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others say that Jeremiah, one of the prophets. But what about you? He asked, who do you say I am? It doesn't matter what your mom thinks about Jesus or your grandma thinks about Jesus. What do you think about Jesus? But what about you, he asked. Who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my father in heaven. And this is powerful right here. And I tell you, you are Peter. Let me pause right there. Jesus asked, who do you say I am? He says, I think you're the Messiah. He's talking to who? Who is he talking to? No, no, who is Jesus talking to? Simon. Jesus is talking to Simon. He asked Simon, Simon, who do people say that I am? He says, you are the Messiah. And then Jesus calls him by a different name. He says, and you are Peter. Changed his name on the spot from Simon to Peter. Somebody say Peter. The Bible says, and I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell will not overcome it here's what i need you to do tonight three things as we ask people to do every monday night number one i want you to take some notes write some stuff down because you can't remember what god told you if you don't remember what god told you you're gonna want to go back and remember because this message i ain't trying to like gas myself but this is gonna be a banger i ain't even gonna lie to you y'all need to get ready because god's about to whoo no 
number one, take some notes, write some stuff down. Number two, we are not a quiet community here at SEU. We do that in the message. And last but not least, I want you to open up your heart because I truly believe that tonight, someone say tonight, God wants to speak to you. So I want you to do me a favor, bow your heads and close your eyes as we pray over the preaching of God's word. Father, right now, in Jesus' name, we ask that you would speak to us in the way that only you can, God. That tonight there will be a divine download. That tonight our identity would not come from any other place but strictly from you. God, we ask these things in the mighty name of Jesus. And all God's people said? Amen. All God's people said? Amen. Real quick, uh, where are the Dallas Cowboys fans? Y'all need to sit down. Y'all need to sit down and be ashamed of yourself. Be ashamed. Ashamed. Shame. You know what? If you leave this chapel, I won't even be upset. <laughs> Real quick, um, I, I'm a very nostalgic person, okay? I love to go down memory lane. And as I was getting ready for this message, I was thinking about a time in my life. Um, normally, in August... There's a, there's a buzz, there's an excitement because school is happening. And I remember that when I was in high school or middle school or even elementary school, I would get so hyped about going to school shopping. Anybody else or just me? There was nothing like going, going to school shopping. You would buy a bunch of stuff you know you didn't need, but you just wanted it. And here's what you would do. You would buy all the stuff, you would go through the syllabus, you would get all the stuff on the list, and here's what you would do. Tell me if I'm lying. You would go home the night before and you would lay it all out. And you would just look at it. Look at that. Look at God. <laughs> you just look at all the stuff that you bought. You knew you were going to get straight D's, but your stuff looked good. <laughs> and, then, and then you never iron your clothes. But that one night before school, you ironed your clothes. Man, you, took a, you normally take a shower either at night or in the morning. You took two showers. You took one at night and you took one in the morning. You were ready. Every other day of the school year, it was a mission to try to get you up. But that first day, ain't nobody have to wake you up. You didn't even need an alarm clock. You woke the alarm clock up. You were ready to go. Now, when it comes to school, there's two kinds of people, okay? There's some of us that we buy all that stuff and we don't, we don't use half of it. But then there's the other people, you people. We're going to find out if you're in the room tonight. Where are my people that you, you color code everything? <laughs> like you got a Google sheet with all your classes, all your assignments. Different stuff is in different colors because it means different things. Raise your hand if that's you. <laughs> See, that ain't me. That's why I got an assistant. My life is a mess. Color code things and and you name everything, and you put a label on everything. Real, where are my label people? You put labels on everything. Like some of you girls, you know what you do? You go on TikTok, and you, you follow like mom TikTok. You don't even got a boyfriend. You following mom TikTok. And you see these moms that have like all these cubbies in their house for different things. Yeah, some of y'all getting exposed tonight. Got all these cubbies. And every cubby has like a label on it. It's where the toys go, and this is where the Legos go. This is where the colored pencils go, and this is where this goes, and this is where that goes. If you're in the room, you're excited to become a mom. Make some noise. Love it. Love it. We got people excited to be moms. Let's go. <laughs> I love people who are organized. I am not a naturally organized person. It takes work for me to be organized. And normally, because I'm not that organized, I get very organized people around me. People who know how to organize things and file things and label things. Somebody say label. Label. Checking notes tonight, I want to really talk about labels, but it, it, I want to speak from this thought. Who told you that? Who told you that? Right, writing down the title of tonight's message, I, I want to speak from this thought. Who told you that? And tonight, I want to talk about labels. Somebody say labels. labels. 
See, if you're taking notes, a label is used to describe or ascribe value to something. A label is used to either describe or ascribe value to something. In life, a lot of times, people will put labels on you. And sometimes you will put labels on yourself. Some of you are praying, God, I don't want to be like this anymore. I don't want to think like this anymore. I don't want to act like this anymore. I don't want to have relationships like this anymore. But the problem is that you are living your life through the lens of a label that was given to you. Because you went through a breakup, in your mind, you are unlovable. Because you made a mistake, not only did you make a mistake and you failed, but you actually see yourself as a failure. Some of us have fallen into the lie that what we do or what we have done is actually who we are. And what you've done is you've taken a moment and you've turned it into your whole identity. Like, have you ever talked to somebody that never got over the breakup? <laughs> Don't look at them. Do not look at them. <laughs> have you ever talked to somebody who they had this opportunity they were, they were so excited about and then they lost the opportunity and they've never gotten past that thing that they were supposed to do that they never got to do. Like I was watching TikTok the other day. I was dying laughing because there's always that guy who's like, yo, in high school, I was crazy on the football field. Like if I would have torn my ACL, I would have been in the league. And he's like, bro, that's cool, but you 45 still talking about how when you were in high school, Sit down, Uncle Danny. <laughs> There's people who live their entire life based on a sickness, based on a breakup, based on a divorce, based on a fill in the blank, and their whole life is defined by the label. See, some of you, you don't do things because you're afraid of the way that people will label you. And sometimes you can't get yourself to do certain things because of the way that you've labeled yourself. Tonight, I, I would love to get a little bit vulnerable with you and share some of my labels in my life that I've had to wrestle with and fight through my entire life. Is it okay if I'm a little bit honest and vulnerable tonight? I feel y'all judging me already. Stop judging me. You judgmental Christian, you. My first label came in the sixth grade. I was in the sixth grade, and it was my first day of school, so you know, I was hype. Yo, my outfit was crisp, with a okay, crisp. My outfit was crazy. And when you are in middle school, you are a middle school boy in the sixth grade. When you go to school, you do not care about grades. You do not care about books. You do not care about homework. You do not care about teachers. You have one simple objective. And that's to find a girlfriend. All you want. It's the only thing you want. It's the only thing you need. So I came into sixth grade. Listen, y'all. I had my pimp walk. I was like, what's up, girl? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing, mama? You want to be Mrs. X Rivera? Come over here, girl. I'm like, sixth grade. Girl, I'll buy you a house. I'll let you quit your job. I, yo, I'm in the, I'm 12. Like, calm down, bro. I was ready to go. My first day of school, I'm in the third period. And guys, I saw her. Her, y'all know who I'm talking about. Her. And I was like, esa es mi esposa. It's my wife, that's gonna be my baby mama, she's gonna have all 27 of my kids, it's her. We believe in big, big families, anyways. And so, 
I did this thing that we used to do. We don't do this no more. Now we got text messages. Now we slide into DMs. Now we do all this other stuff. We used to write notes. We used to write notes. We used to write notes. You know what I'm talking about, Curtis? We used to write notes, Curtis. We used to write notes. And so I write her a cute little note. It gets over to her. I pass it down to like three people to the right and then two people to the left. She was in the back. She wrote my notes. He he starts giggling. Start talking. I go to first period. Guess who's in my fourth period? Her. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm out here speaking in tongues. Four period. I send the note back. <laughs> Comes back. I keep on writing. Fifth period. Guess who I see again? Thank you, Jesus. Her. By sixth period, I knew she was my wife. God spoke to me. I got confirmation. I was prophesied over. I fell down at the service. It all happened. It all happened. So I was bold. I was bold. It was only the first day, but I was already in love. I had already named our six kids. So I sent her the note. Y'all know what I said. Will you be my girlfriend? Check yes. Check yes. I didn't give no options. We ain't playing games, Curtis. Child, put y'all on game. Don't give her options. If she don't want you, she just won't send the note back. Listen, man, shoot or shoot, shoot or shoot. You got to shoot your shot, y'all. I need a man in here to receive that word, shoot your shot. Anyways. But girls, girls, help me out, though. Give them like a look. Give them something or something, anything, anything. My brothers are starving out here. Anyways. I send the note. She checks yes. Check yes. Tuesday, I was walking on clouds. Wednesday, I was singing love songs. Thursday, I bought her flowers. Friday, I paid for her lunch. But then Friday afternoon came. Friday afternoon, I get a note. Hey, I love you so much. But my parents told me that I can't have a boyfriend. But you know what? Listen, listen, my mama raised me right. And so I was understanding. I was gracious. I said, baby, you know I love you. Whenever you want to come back, I'll be right here waiting. Send the note. I'm going to the bus to go back home. And I run into her best friend. No, hold on, hold on. I ain't like that. I ain't like that. Calm down. Calm down. If you move that quick, that says something about you. <laughs> but listen. <laughs> listen, 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 listen. I bumped her into her friend and I said, hey, uh, I don't know if you heard about me and, and homegirl. We're not together no more. And, uh, you know, her parents, they said that you couldn't, we couldn't be together. And, and she said, her parents? She looked me dead in my eye and she said, her parents, she broke up with you because she thought you were ugly. <laughs> and that, my friends, is where I got my first label. ugly he's ugly my second label came in the eighth grade 
I wasn't real good with school. And so if you struggle with school, I have compassion for you. You got this. Push through. But I, I was not good in school. I was, I was on the D's get degrees train. I was just trying to pass. I was trying to get to the next grade, y'all, because I was in good school. I was real good at tests, but I was real bad at homework. And I'll never forget that every day, right, when you get your report card, everyone's asking, hey, let me see your report card. What did you get? Right? Everyone's passing their own report cards. And I was embarrassed to pass my report card. So you know what I said. Oh, no, y'all, y'all know exactly what I said. I said, oh, there was a substitute today, which means they didn't pass our report cards today because we had a substitute. You never used that lie? I did. Anyways. <laughs> Oh, we had a substitute today. The teacher didn't give her the report cards, so they didn't pass them out, so I didn't have it. I get on my bus, and my friends start asking me. I'm at the front of the bus. I got a bunch of friends in the back of the bus, but I didn't want to talk to nobody that day, so I sat in the front of the bus. And they're like, from the back, they're like, hey, John, what were your grades? And I was like, oh, I had a substitute. I didn't get my grades today. And someone said, you're lying. Somebody, two guys come to the front of the bus, two big old guys, they grab my book bag and throw it to the back of the bus. I know some of y'all are like, that's a fight on my block, but there was like 10 of them and one of me. They grab my book bag, they open it up, they pull out my report card, and they start passing it around the bus. And then it got to this one girl. She starts reading them out loud to the whole bus. Social studies, D. English, C. And she goes down the list. And at the end, she finished. She looks at me and she says, oh, my God, you are so stupid. And that, my friends, is where I got my next label. I'm stupid. So not only am I ugly, now I'm stupid and ugly. Right? I'll give you one more because I could be here all night. I remember when I was a freshman in high school, I tried, to, I tried out for the basketball team. I love basketball. Like, Basketball is the love of my life. I love basketball with all of my heart. I'm one of those dudes, I'll stay up watching the West Coast games at like 10, 30, 12 o'clock at night because I love basketball. Season's about to start. The Magic are going to be great. It's going to be a good season. But I love basketball, and I used to play a lot of basketball when I was a kid, and I was pretty good at it too. And so what I did was I tried out for the team, and all my boys were like, yo, you're going to get in, bro. You're going to get in. Like, we need somebody like you on our team, bro. You're going to get on the team. I said, all right. So I went to the tryouts, and I played. And you know how it works. After you do a tryout, outside the locker room, they put a paper with all the names of the people who made it on the team. I come over, and I'm excited. All my boys are hyping me up, and we all come together, and we look at it, and we're going through the names, and one of them gets picked up, and another one gets picked up, and another one gets picked up, and they all leave. And I'm just staying there looking at the paper, and my name's not on it. And then this senior guy walks up. He's on the basketball team, real cocky. He's looking at me. He's like, what you looking for? And I said, oh, I was trying to find my name on the list to see if I, I made the team. And he says, well, guess you're not good enough. And walked away. See, he thought he just made a comment, but what he didn't know is that he had just given me another label. Not enough. And so I am walking around life believing that I am ugly, stupid, and not enough. And those are only three of my labels. Rhetorical question that I would like to submit to you tonight. Do you think that these labels had any kind of effect on the way that I saw myself and the way that I lived my life? I want to ask you another question. You don't have to say it out loud. You don't have to say it to anybody else. You don't have to say it to me. Let me ask you a question. What labels have you been carrying? 
What labels have you been walking around with? They came from your parents. They came from your siblings. They came from your old best friends. That came from that previous relationship. That came from your teammates. That came in a locker room. That came in third period. What are the labels that other people put on you because of the mistakes that you made or the things that you did or things you didn't do because of the way that you dressed or because of your height or because of your weight, because of the way your hair looked, because of the kind of family that you came from, because you were rich or because you were poor, because you were smart or you didn't feel that smart. What labels have you been walking around with? Labels that people put on you and and what are the labels that you have put on yourself? All of us, someone say all. All All of us have labels. Every single one of us. Labels that people have put on us and labels that we have put on ourselves. And they've all affected us. A lot of you are carrying around labels that have made you into the person that you are today. But here's the thing about the people who labeled me. Context is super important in life. See, the people who labeled me had the ability to label me, but they did not have the right to label me. There's a difference between the ability and the right. The ability means you could try to put on a label on me. You could say whatever you want about me. You could say whatever you want about the way that I dress. You could say whatever you want about my relationship. You could say the whatever you want about my family, about myself, about my ministry, about my calling, about the way that I look. You could say anything about me, but just because you can doesn't mean that you have the right to say something about me and label me. I don't have to be defined by what you say. That is a decision. And the only way that you can make that decision is by recognizing who has the right to label you. Tonight, I would like to share with you that there are only three people that can label you, that can label anything, really. Three people who have the right to label. Because these labels, I don't have to carry these. Because the people who gave them to me didn't have the right to give them to me. Y'all ready for this? I want to help someone today. I want to get real practical. There are only three people that have the right to label something or label someone. The first person who can label something is the maker of the thing. The maker. See, people have been arguing for close to a decade now. Who is the GOAT in basketball? Is it LeBron James? Is it Michael Jordan? I will say this, ain't that many people rocking LeBrons, but everybody's wearing Jordans. But that's a different conversation. Listen, these are Jordans. Real quick, make, make, your, make some noise if you like shoes. Make some noise for me tonight. Yeah. I see y'all, I see y'all, Prado. Y'all got, y'all got a little shoe game. See, these shoes are called Jordans, okay? These are specifically Jordan 1s. And the reason why they're called Jordans is because Michael Jordan make them. He made them. I can walk walk around and say, hey, yo, check out these Jonathan ones. He joins his fire, right? I can't just call these shoes whatever I want them to be. Because at the end of the day, I did not make them. Somebody else did. And because somebody else made it, they have the right to define and say what it is. The first person that can label something is the maker of the thing. The second person who can label a thing is the owner of the thing. The owner. I, uh, I can't wait to have me some kids. And uh, I, I saw all the excited moms. Praise God for that. We need more kids on earth. Kids are a blessing. And I can't wait to have kids. But I be thinking about, see, I'm still, I'm still not fully saved. God's still working in my life. There's a couple of things that will set me off. And my kids aren't even here yet, but there is one thing I know will set me off. Have you ever seen somebody try to correct somebody else's kids? Bro, when I see people 
correcting somebody else's kids. Or one time, I saw someone spank somebody else's kids. Let somebody touch little Jonathan Jr. <laughs> What's up? Bro, game over. Don't touch my kids. Don't scream at my kids. Don't correct my kids. You know why? Because they're my kids. They're my kids. Listen to me. Me and my mom fight. I love my mom, but we fight. Ain't nobody on earth that could push my buttons like my mama. But only I could talk about my mama. Don't you ever talk about my mom. Don't you ever talk about Damaris. First of all, because Damaris will cut you. That's one. But two, it's because it's not your mom. It's my mom. See, the maker... The owner, and this is the last one, the buyer. The buyer of something has the right to label it. I, uh, I have a car. It's a, it's a little Honda Civic, real simple. But I don't know about anybody here, you have a car, but you name your car? I don't know why. When I met my car, it felt like a woman. My car was a woman. I just knew it. And I named her Shelby. I don't know why. But sometimes, after a long day, I'll be walking up to my car. I'm like, man, Shelby, it's good to see you, girl. How you been doing today, Shelby? I'll be talking to my car. If you walked up to my car and say, oh, you should name your car Sharon. I said, no, she has a name, and it's Shelby. And I have the right to name my car. Because every month, guess who's paying for that car payment? Me. The only people who have the right to label something is the maker, the owner, and the buyer. Now look at me. All the people throughout your life who have labeled you, who have said things about you, who have tried to define and decide who you are and how much value you have. Here's what I can guarantee. Most of them do not fall into these categories. And none of them, listen to me, none of them fall into all three. There is only one person who can say, there's only one person who can look at your life and say, I made you, I own you, and I bought you. It's only one person who falls in that category. The Bible says, Jeremiah chapter 1, he's talking to Jeremiah, and he says, Jeremiah, I knew you in your mother's womb, and I knit you together, and I called you by name. Listen to me, God made you. He loves that big head you got. I wasn't saying like that. I was saying like he looked at me, I looked at him. It was a moment. <laughs> he loves. He made you on purpose. The way he made you gave you gifts and talents and a personality. He made you the way that you are. He made you. I just need, somebody needs to hear this tonight. You are not a mistake. You, you, you are not the result of five minutes of pleasure. No, you were created in love by love himself. God made you. Number two, not only did God make you, but God owns you. That is a controversial idea in 2023. Nobody owns me. Nobody can tell me what to do. Nobody can tell me how to live in my body. No one can tell me what I need to do or where I need to go or what I need to say. Nobody except one. See, as a Christian, we believe in this thing called surrender. And when I came to Jesus, I surrendered 
everything to him. I surrendered my money. I surrendered my plans. I surrendered my body. I surrendered my desires. I surrendered my dreams. I surrendered everything when I came to Jesus. First Corinthians chapter six, verse 19 says, you are the temple. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Have you ever had somebody drive your car? I don't know about you. I don't like it when people drive my car. I don't like it. You know why? Because they're not going to drive it the way that I would drive it. They're not going to protect it the way that I would protect it. <laughs> Listen. You live your life differently when you know that your body doesn't belong to you. When your plans don't belong to you, when your life doesn't belong to you, you live differently when you know that your life belongs to God because he owns you. And you know why he owns you? Because he bought you. See, the, the verse right after that verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 19, everyone loves to talk about that. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. You need to protect it. You need to keep it pure. You need to do this. And sometimes that within itself is not enough motivation. But you know why you should do it? Because the verse right after says this. It says, you are the, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And then right after that it says, and you were bought at a price. You were bought at a price. What was the price? How much did God pay for you? Listen to me. Heaven went bankrupt so that God could save your soul. So whenever you feel like you are not valuable, whenever you feel like you do not deserve love, that you are not worthy of grace and mercy, when you feel like you are not valuable and you are not deserving, here's the thing that you need to know tonight is that your worth was already determined at the cross. That when Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, here's what he's saying, you're worthy, you're valuable, you are loved. Not because of anybody else, but because of the price that I paid for you. I wanna finish off with this. We read earlier about this exchange between Jesus and Peter or really his name is Simon someone say Simon Jesus asks Simon and all the disciples who do people say that I am and Simon says I believe that you are the Christ the Messiah the son of the living God and after he said that Jesus looks at him and he says and I call you Peter and on this rock I will build my church See, here's the thing, if, if you don't understand the original language, you don't understand what just happened. See, Simon is his name. Do you want to know what Simon means? Simon means shifty, unreliable. Could you imagine being called Mr. Unreliable? That your whole name, your whole identity is you are unreliable. You cannot be trusted. You are shifty. You're moving. You're never stable. Jesus looks at Simon and he says, hey, Mr. Unreliable, today I want to give you a new name. He says, who do you think I am? I think you're the Christ. I think you're the son of the living God. And then he says, and I call you Peter. Do you know what the word Peter means it's not the same as Simon it's actually the opposite see Simon means shifty moving unreliable Peter stands for unmoving the rock 
what Jesus is telling Simon in this moment and I believe what he's saying to all of us tonight is the way that you see yourself is not the way that I see you the labels that you've given yourself are not the labels that I give you the labels that people have put on your life are not the labels that I give you no 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 you call yourself Simon I call you Peter you call yourself unreliable I call you a rock the labels that people have put over you tonight I'm ripping them off I'm taking them off I'm not gonna allow you to live based on your past and based on your mistakes and based on your failures no 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 today I give you a new name today I give you a new identity today I want you to see yourself through a new lens when I come to Jesus I go from Simon to Peter the problem is that some of us are still walking around calling ourselves Simon when God's already called us Peter. Some of us are still walking around stupid, ugly, unloved, forgotten, overlooked, undeserving, broken, failure. When God looks at you, he says, chosen, loved, forgiven, called, empowered, filled, son, daughter, king, queen. That's the way that I look at you. That's what I say about you. You need to get your ears away from men and say, heaven, what do you say about me? God, what do you say about me? What does your word say about me? What does the truth say about me? Not what man thinks, not what the enemy thinks, not what I think. What does God say about me? I ask you to stand up on your feet tonight. Help some people. Help some people. You have been walking around with labels. You've been asking, what's wrong with me? Why am I like this? Have you, real, real vulnerable moment, have you ever asked yourself that question, why am I like this? Put your hands down. You know why? It's because labels. Some of them that you've carried even since you were a child. This is why therapy is so important. This is why you need someone to help you to walk through that process of digging and uncovering. Where does all this come from? But here's the thing. It's not just about knowing where it started. It's about stopping the belief in the label. And you know how you do that? It's by shifting your focus to believing something else. Saying, God, I believe what you say about me. I believe your truth. I stand on your word. I stand on your promise. There's only one person who made you. There's only one person who owns you. There's only one person who bought you. And his name is Jesus. He's the only person who has the right to label you and to say who you are and what you are not. I want to make two prayers tonight. First, I want to pray for people who have been carrying labels and you know it, you're aware of it, you fight with it every day. And the voice of the enemy and the voice of the accuser has been loud in your life and in your ear. And tonight you say, I don't want to live with these labels. I don't want to continue to see my life through this lens and I want to put my focus on who God says that I am. That's you tonight, all over this room, can you just lift up your hands? That's you. Repeat after me, Lord Jesus, tonight I make a decision to trust and believe what you say about me, that I am a son, a daughter, a child of God, forgiven, chosen, and loved. God, help me to tune out every other voice that is not yours. And help me to believe what you say about me. Today, I receive your words. I receive my identity. I receive who you say I am. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. In a moment, we're going to worship. And we're going to be declare the goodness and the faithfulness of God. 
before we do that, I, I just want to give an opportunity. If there's any friends here today, maybe you've been coming to SU for the past couple of months. Maybe someone invited you or brought you. Maybe you've lived your entire life with labels. And one of the labels that has never come over your life is Christian, disciple, follower, forgiven. Maybe you've never taken the moment to accept the free gift of salvation that comes only through Jesus Christ. Tonight, I would love to give you the opportunity. If you could bow your heads and close your eyes all over this room. And if tonight, you're a friend that's here tonight and you say, I wanna give my life to Jesus. I wanna become a Christian. I wanna become a follower of Jesus. If that's you, I wanna pray for you tonight. On the count of three, I just want you to shoot up your hand. Tonight, I wanna become a Christian. I wanna follow Jesus. I wanna give my life to him. I wanna have a fresh start and a new beginning. If that's you on the count of three, lift up your hand. One, two, three. It's awesome. You can put your hands back down. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna pray together as an SCU family. If you lifted up your hand, this is specifically for you. But we're gonna say it together so that you know that you're not on your own. This prayer by itself does not save you. What saves you is putting your faith in Jesus and believing that he's the only person who can tell you that you are who you are. Come on, repeat after me together, SCU. Lord Jesus, tonight, I give you my life. I trust and believe that Jesus is who he says he is. And I am who you say I am. God, today, I ask for forgiveness. I repent of my sins. And I come to you. Change my life. Make me a new person. I don't promise to be perfect. But I promise to be committed to you. Lord, thank you for loving me. In Jesus' name. Come on, someone shout out amen and give God a round of applause. If you lifted up your hands tonight, I want you to know I'm so proud of you. After the service, feel free to come over to the corner if you want to talk to somebody about the decision that you just made. We'd love to talk to you. Here's the last thing before we go into worship, and I hope that it encourages you. See, Peter was asked, who do you think I am? Who do people say that I am? And he said, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. It wasn't until Peter declared who Jesus was that he found out who he was. And that's why worship is so important. Because when you lift up your hands and when you lift up your voice and you begin to declare who God is, it shows you who you are. It does something to you. And so all of this room, can you lift up your hands today? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to worship one more time with passion and with everything we got we're going to declare the goodness and the faithfulness of who god is and i believe that as we do that he's going to continue to reveal who you are in his presence